Hello class, welcome to the final segment in lecture 11. And in this final segment, we're going to actually take a bit of a more conceptual approach at some of the mathematical and stuff and theory that we derived in the previous two segments. And so to illustrate why in some cases the solution is not valid and why in some cases it is valid. So with that, let's go ahead and get right into it. So let's start with the very first case that we looked at. Let's take a look at the case where uh, d phi dn is positive and where r is positive. And we just established that we can't possibly have a physically valid solution given those two combinations of values. So let's actually walk through how we can actually visualize what the force balance is going to look like based on the information that we've been given. So the radius of curvature here is positive. And by the very definition that we use for radius of curvature, a positive radius curve curvature is something that is rotating in the counterclockwise direction. So this is what our wind pattern looks like. We're rotating counterclockwise here, which means, uh, keep in mind our definition for natural coordinates, let's consider this point here on the right-hand side of the circle. So my t, my tangential axis, will be pointing from south to north at this particular point, meaning my normal axis, which points 90 degrees to the left of the tangential axis, will be pointing toward the center of the circle that we're tracing out here. And this is important because this R gives you an idea of what direction the in hat or the in uh, axis, the normal axis points. And you need to know that information because of this term right here. So what this term right here tells me is that as I go in the direction of in hat, as I go towards higher values of in hat, then my geopotential must be increasing. Or also you can make the argument that my pressure must be increasing. So as I go in the positive in hat direction, which is going towards the center of this, of this hypothetical flow pattern, as I go in the positive in hat direction, I'm going towards an area of higher pressure or higher geopotential. So that means I must have higher geopotential at the center of the circulation, and I must have lower geopotential uh, away from the circulation as I go in the opposite direction of the normal axis. So let's take a look at the uh, Let's take a look at the forces that actually are involved here. So again, we have three forces that we have to worry about. Pressure gradient force, Coriolis force, and centrifugal force. Let's start with the pressure gradient force. So again, pressure gradient force points from higher geopotential to lower geopotential or higher pressure to lower pressure, which means my pressure gradient force points outward or something like this. And if we're looking at the Coriolis force, remember Coriolis force since we're in the northern hemisphere, uh, it is a detail that's worth reiterating. If we're in the northern hemisphere, that means that our Coriolis force is acting to the right of our air parcel's motion. So if our air parcel is rotating around like this, then that means the Coriolis force must be directed outward, away from the center of our circulation here. So our Coriolis force points like that. But also our centrifugal force points away from the center of circulation. So we have a centrifugal force that looks like that. And remember, gradient wind balance is a balance between pressure gradient force, Coriolis force, and centrifugal force. I don't know about you, but that doesn't look like much of a force balance, because all the forces are pointing in the same direction. That's like having a tug of war where all the kids are pulling in the same direction. It's not much of a contest here. And in fact, since because all of these forces are pointing in the same direction, there's no way you can possibly have a force balance. This defeats the whole idea of a force balance because all the forces are acting in the same direction here. So that's more or less the reason why this is not a physically viable solution here. It's because all the forces are pointing in one direction, so there's no way that you can possibly have a force balance here. So again, that's why we don't have a physically possible solution. And if we look at the B case, it's actually even worse because in the case of B, this the solution that we ended up here, here implies that we have a stronger velocity. So now it's an it's an even more lopsided game of tug of war between the forces here because that means the centrifugal and Coriolis forces are going to be stronger. So that's why this first case is not physically possible because all the forces point in the same direction. And I'm going to skip case two because that's going to be something that you will tackle as part of your next homework assignment. But let's take a look at case three. So again, in, the, in uh, case three here, we have a positive radius of curvature. So again, that's a counterclockwise circulation, which means our hin hat uh, direction, that means our normal axis is again pointing towards the center here. And as we go toward, as we go in the direction of this in hat, in the direction of this normal axis, as we go towards higher values of n, 
we are going towards lower values of phi because you'll see this is negative here. So higher values of n must give me lower values of phi and vice versa. That is to say, lower values of n must give me higher values of geopotential or pressure. So that means as I go in the positive in direction, as I go towards higher values of n, I go towards areas of lower pressure. And I go in the opposite direction, I go towards areas of higher pressure. So that means that our pressure gradient force must point inward towards the center of the circulation. And again, if I'm rotating counterclockwise, then my Coriolis force must be directed outward, something like this, and also centrifugal force is directed outward, away from the center of rotation. So our force balance looks like this. And this actually could be a force balance here. The pressure gradient force could be equal and opposite to the combination of Coriolis and centrifugal force. So unlike case one, where it was a very lopsided game of tug of war, this is game of tug of war, for lack of a better way to put it, this is a bit more, this has an opportunity to actually be an even fight. This, the pressure gradient force does actually have the chance to balance the centrifugal and Coriolis forces because we do have forces that are pointing in opposite directions. And you might be wondering, okay, well, why does case B not actually give us a physical solution? And the reason why is because, again, if you work through the mathematics of it, this implies a velocity that's much stronger than the velocity up here. So you have a much stronger centrifugal and Coriolis force. And at this point, you kind of go past a critical point where the centrifugal and Coriolis forces are just too strong to balance, to possibly balance the pressure gradient force. And this actually depicts a typical cyclone at the Northern Hemisphere. Counterclockwise circulation, low pressure at the center of the circulation here. So this is more or less the force balance of what's referred to as a regular low. Now let's take a look at case four. So in case four, we have a raise of curvature that's negative, which means we have a circulation that's rotating in the clockwise direction. And if we're rotating in the clockwise direction, that means our, if our in-hat points to the left of motion, the left of our, uh, our trajectory's motion, then it must be pointing outward, our in-hat points outward, away from the center of the circulation. And again, pay careful attention to the sign here. Since d phi dn is negative, that means as I go towards higher values of n, that means I'm going towards lower values of phi. I'm going towards low values of pressure. Well, now the positive in hat direction goes away from the center here. So as I go in this positive in direction, I'm going towards lower values of pressure. If I go in the opposite direction, I go towards higher values of pressure, which means I must have higher pressure at the center of the circulation, lower pressure as I get away from the circulation. So that then means that my pressure gradient force points from the center away, so it points outward. Some pressure gradient force points something like that. Now, if I'm rotating in the clockwise direction, that means, my again, my Coriolis force in the northern hemisphere acts to the right of motion, so my Coriolis force must point towards the center of the circulation here. And centrifugal force always points in the outward direction, so here, again, I have something that could actually be a force balance. A Coriolis force could theoretically balance out the pressure gradient force and the centrifugal force in this case. And if you work through the mathematics of these two combinations here, so the plus solution gives you a stronger win, the minus solution gives you a weaker win. So in the case of so in case 4b, you've got a weaker win, which means your centrifugal and Coriolis forces are weaker, but it is still possible to get a balance. We haven't gone over some critical value where it's impossible for these two forces to balance each other out there is still an opportunity for the pressure gradient force and the centrifugal force, those two forces combined, is possible for those two combined forces to balance out the Coriolis force. So that's going to do it for the solutions to the gradient wind balance. Hopefully this all makes sense to you. Uh, if not, I would encourage you to go back through and make sure that you understand the mathematical and physical logic of all the stuff that we looked at. But that's going to do it for lecture 11. And with that, I will see you in the next lecture where we tr discuss trajectories, streamlines, and the thermal wind relationship. So with that, I will see you all in the next lecture.